What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at Carapaz of Nizaf on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. So for this encounter you want 2 tanks, 4 healers and 14 DPS. Setup wise, not much to say, you want at least 1 warlock, more if possible, and this is mainly because gateways are mandatory. At least for the strat most if not all guilds are using at the moment. And and at least one shaman with windrush or a druid with roar, but more on this soon. So with that said, let's check out what's new on mythic, a lot actually. Starting off with the adaptive membrane, on mythic it can and will target 3 players in the raid. Seem to do this every other cast, so 2, 4, 6, etc. Because of this it now also reduces healing received by membrane targets by 75% and grants immunity to sanity draining effects. And on top of this, when a player's membrane is broken, the player will spawn a shard of sanity, which restores 10 sanity to all players within 20 yards upon contact with this shard. And these shards of sanity will also be spawned upon breaking membrane on certain mobs like the growths in phase 2, but more on this later. Following this, the growths in phase 2 will also spawn two of the small nightmare adds when you defeat them, and the cysts that cover the gauntlet in phase 2 will also cover certain areas in in phase 3. On top of this they've added something called reactive mass and regenerative expulsion. And pretty much when you damage a cyst a timer starts. Upon completion a big red circle will spawn around the cyst and after a bit this will explode dealing damage and disorienting anyone hit. And it also regrows the cyst. So back to full size and health. Important to note here is that the timer isn't based on how much damage you do or if you fully nuke it down at all. If you poke it with a stick the timer starts. So sadly dots for extra damage is not a solid strat here. And apart from this though, the entire fight has become more scripted and there's a lot less RNG going on. The big tentacles in phase 1 will always spawn in set patterns, so you always know when and where they will slam down. Raffian will only assist you during phase 1, meaning no sanity restoration from him after phase 1. And the small intermission phase between phase 2 and 3, where you smack the furry of Nazoff around a bit before he runs up the ramp to Nazoff himself, has been removed. So as soon as you defeat the final growth in phase 2, he immediately runs up to the ramp to start phase 3. And other than that, as always, all numerical values have been increased, things hurt more, have more health, and well, just generally more of everything to deal with. However, before we go over the fight itself, I want to cover the topic of gateways and the dreaded mouse over macros. For this fight, having a interact with mouse over for the gateways will make things a lot easier. When you use the gateways is pretty set and everyone in the raid will use the gateways at the same time. And there's a lot of clutter, adds, players and the boss itself that can cover up the gateways making it an absolute pain to click at the correct timings. So for you people who don't know how this works, a quick walkthrough, and for you who already know, skip ahead a bit or listen to me jabber on for a minute. So start off with making a macro slash focus mouse over. And you will use this while mousing over the gateway that you will be using next. Keep in mind that you need to refocus new gateways, you can't keep the same focus for the entire fight. Following this you want to press escape, go to key bindings, then targeting, scroll down to interact with mouse over and bind that to a comfortable key. Now if you have a gateway focused you can mouse over the focus frame for that gateway and press your key bind for the interact with mouse over to instantly click the gateway. Which makes it not only faster than actually actually clicking it, but it also makes sure you don't miss it for any reason. Of course you still have to be in range of the gateway when you do this. Trust me though, this will help out a lot. Now with that said, let's go over the fight. Now as I previously mentioned, this fight is very very scripted on Mythic, so I'll cover this step by step and hopefully it won't drag on too much. Starting off with phase 1. First off, just a few key points. So during phase 1, the goal is to deal with two sets of the big tendy slams before transitioning to phase 2. As I mentioned before, these always spawn in a set pattern. First set being four tentacles slamming down to separate the encounter area in the three. Each area will have hemorrhages covering the tendies, and just like in Heroic, these will need to be nuked down. The front area closer to where Fury of Nizoff is standing when you pull him and the middle section will also have an eyeball add in them. You know what they're called. 
And for the second set, there will be two tentacles that slam down in a V formation, splitting the area in two, with one eyeball tendy in the far back. For both of these sets of tendies, you will need to split up the raid to both deal with eyeball ads and hemorrhages to open up the area again. Hit me up on Facebook or Patreon if you'd like our setup for this or how we split everything. Anyways, on pull you want to tank Furry of Nassau where he stands, spread with mind bombs and get ready for your first set of tendies to slam down. As soon as the shadows from the tendies are visible, pull the furry to the top section of tentacles, preferably to where the two hemorrhages on that side spawns. We'll always be in the same spot. Keep him there until the top section eyeball spawns, then pull him over there for some cleave. All DPS that are assigned to the top section should focus down the eyeball as soon as it spawns. These guys or gals really hurt on mythic. You will need to interrupt the breed madness cast, just make sure to interrupt it when the channel actually starts or mid channel. They do a 2-3 second cast before the channel starts, do not interrupt this. But also make sure to interrupt the channel before the adaptive membrane hits because this will make him immune to interrupts. However as soon as the eyeball and hemorrhages are down, move into the middle section to help out with small adds and hemorrhages. As the top section team works on their eyeball, the middle section team should be working on their hemorrhages and eyeball as well. The eyeball is always the priority target here. If you get targeted by Breed Madness Beam from the eyeballs, make sure to use a defensive. Again, they really hurt. And the bottom section team just need to burn down their hemorrhages and join in with the middle team as soon as possible. Following this, when all tendies have gone up again, center and burn the boss a bit more and wait for the next set of tendies to slam down. For this, you will again split the raid, keeping the boss inside the V formation tendies. Tank the furry near either of the two sets of hemorrhages, then move to the next set when they get low to help with cleave and picking up adds. When the hemorrhages on the inside tendies are down, use the extra action button to fly to which will fly you over the tendies to join the outside team. And while this is going on, outside team burn down the eyeball ad and start working on all the hemorrhages. Keep in mind that you will not have a tank for a better part of this tendy face, so have a plan for handling the small adds. Shamans can use air filamentals, if you have a brewmaster they can pre-place statue before the tendy slam down, or just be ready to kite a bit if needed. As soon as the inside team flies over, finish off all the hemorrhages, then it's time to AFK. As the DPS goes up, this part might not be needed, we tried doing without it, but in the end transition is so much cleaner with it. And you won't believe what happens next. We still AFK'd. Now, if all goes well and attendees go back up in time, you will have a mind bomb shortly after. And you really, really don't want to transition to phase 2 with this up. Phase 2 is a very tight DPS check and the timer for it starts as soon as you transition. So that's why we AFK. We wait out the mind bomb cast, then when it's about 3 seconds left before the mind bomb explodes, we push the boss. This allows not only the safety of not mind bombing the raid, but for everyone to get in position next to the gateway so you can instantly use it as you push the face. Because of this, boss DPS really isn't a big issue in phase 1, so all DPS should always focus on eyeballs and hemorrhages, not boss damage. Cleave when possible, otherwise adds, adds, adds. TLDR, you wait out the mind bomb, push to phase 2, then all instantly use the gateway going from the start of the ramp and as far down as possible. Now, for phase 2, you will need to split the raid in half to deal with both sides at the same time. It is very important that you find a setup that can finish the sides equally fast. Again, you can hit me up for our setup, but what worked for us might not work for you. One thing that most people do though is more cleave on the right side like fire mages and range cleave like destrolocks on the left side mainly due to how the growths spawn. And here is where the new cyst mechanic comes into play. As I mentioned earlier, as soon as you poke a cyst, its timer to regrow will spawn. So you only want to nuke down cysts where you will be dealing with growths. So for example on the left side, we only hit the cysts that were close to the wall, where the growths are, and for the first two growths we only attack the cysts that were directly adjacent to them, leaving all cysts ahead of us. When the second growth was at like 50% we started dotting up the cyst between growth number 2 and 3 and the cyst next to growth 3. And we kept doing it like that to make sure that we don't activate a cyst timer ahead of time. In short, do not nuke cysts ahead of where you are unless you're going to that location shortly. 
Following this, due to the lack of Rathian in Phase 2, you have to manage your Sanity and Sanity Orbs properly. So you end Phase 2 with full Sanity or close to it, at least like 80 to 100. Anytime you break the adaptive membrane on the growths, they will spawn one of these orbs, which will regenerate 10 Sanity to anyone within 20 yards. So as you're killing off the growths, make sure to move as a group as much as possible and be in range of these orbs as they are picked up. A player needs to run over them in order to detonate them if you will. Just keep in mind that if you are at full sanity you cannot detonate these. And players with mind bomb needs to move away from the rest of the raid. We just had the rule that we're always moving forward so mind bombs always move behind the raid. Make sure to spread though so mind bombs don't clip each other in the back and keep an eye on cysts so they don't regrow and detonate on you. However if it's between that and mind bombing other players the cyst is better. The transition from this phase to phase 3 is a bit tricky. You don't want to transition to phase 3 with fresh mind bombs if possible, as these players will most likely be far behind the rest of the raid as to not blow other players up, and time really is of the essence as soon as phase 3 starts. The timing we tried to go for was before or a bit after mind bombs number 7 I believe. And again, you really want both sides to finish their growths at roughly the same time, because if say left is super fast and have to afk waiting for the right side, their sand Sanity will still be drained, but no more growths to kill, so no more sanity orbs. We struggled a lot with finding a good timing for this transition. We tried slowing DPS down a bit to wait out mind bombs, swapping setups, etc. But in the end, we found transitioning from phase 1 to phase 2 with the AFKing gave us more uptime in phase 2, and just trying to push as much damage as possible to get through it faster worked the best. Now, when you do transition to phase 3, it is important that everyone gets to the next room as fast as as possible, ideally 4-5 seconds before the infinite darkness cast. If anyone still have a mind bomb on them, still run, just hug the wall and announce this to the raid to avoid blowing it up. Now, for the fun bit! So for phase 3 there is a very strict pattern of doing things just to make sure you don't get mind controlled and to not get insta gibbed by the infinite darkness. And here's where more gateways, windrush and actually a speed pot comes into play. So for the first infinite darkness you will use gateway to get away from it. As I mentioned earlier there are now cysts in phase 3 and we will use these as segments or sections if you will. So the first gateway should go from the pie slice you start in and end just just a bit ahead of the cyst, closer to the center of the room. Second darkness you will use Windrush or Roar and run as never before. Third, Lightfoot Potion. Fourth, Gateway again. And if you get a fifth, you go for Windrush again. This will all hopefully make more sense in a bit. So let's go over phase three. As soon as you get to the face and the final room, you want the raid to gather up near the gateway, but not on top of it, roughly where we have our skull mark. Wait for the infinite darkness, and as soon as the cast is finished, everyone uses the gateway. Very important that you're not trigger happy. The darkness puddle targets a random player. So if you're using the gateway mid cast, odds are you're dropping the big ass pool in the location you're escaping to, which is not ideal. Now as soon as you get over the cysts and if the darkness has been dropped properly, it should overlap the cysts just a bit. Tank the Fury of Nazoff in the darkness but not in the cysts as it will increase his damage. Make sure to aim him towards the raid because anytime his membrane breaks, the sanity orb he spawns flies in the direction he is facing. Same thing goes for players. Players that get membrane in this phase goes into the darkness next to the boss and faces somewhere next to the raid, not directly into the raid. As soon as the boss and player's membranes are broken, stack up, then trigger the orb so everyone get their sanity back. Following your first membrane break, you will get tentacle slamming down and everyone in the raid gets their first insanity bombs. Don't get slammed and spread. And I cannot stress this enough, there is so, so little space here. So spreading properly should be your main focus. Just drop everything and spread. You cannot clip another player or be clipped by another player's bomb as sanity is extremely limited. As soon as you see the mind bomb around you and the tentacle shadows, start spreading. Even if you're melee, just run away and spread. As soon as the bomb detonates, don't touch the adds, just run back and stack under the boss so you don't randomly aggro one of them. Nuke down the small adds, stack and dodge new tendy, then get ready for the next infinite darkness. For this one, use roar or wind rush, and again, wait for the cast to finish, then start running to the next section. A few seconds prior to this darkness, have like two or three ranged players 
players clear the top three cysts that you will be running through to get to the next section. And these cysts are again not for padding, do not deal any damage to them prior to this because odds are they will be regrowing when you need to cross them, which is a wipe. If you go out into the cyst to spread during bombs, keep in mind that things like Rushing Jade, Immoora and trinkets like Torment in a Jar will also trigger them. Anyways, across you go. When you get to the next segment, tank Fury in or next to the darkness again, break boss membrane, dodge tentacles, then break player's membrane in the darkness. Stack up, then trigger the sanity orb. Spread with bombs, as soon as they detonate you want to stack on boss which at this point should be tanked fairly centered between the two lanes of cyst you are in between. Roughly where we have our circle mark. Wait for infinite darkness cast, use lightfoot potion and run. Keep in mind that you can use the potion mid cast, it will be up long enough. And again, prior to this darkness, break any cysts in the lane you need to cross to get to the next section. Just like before, tank fury next to the darkness stack up and cleave down adds that spawn during the last bomb. They should all have membranes up so you will get some more regular sanity orbs on these that low sanity players should aim to pick up. Dodge tendies, break membranes, soak sanity orb as a group. Now put up a new gateway, refocus the gateway as soon as possible, nuke boss until next infinite darkness and this one will overlap with bombs to make it a bit more spicy. As soon as the bombs go out, stack on the new gateway gateway and as soon as the darkness cast go off use the gateway. Have fun clicking this if you aren't using the interact with mouse over or if you forget to focus the gateway. As soon as you get to the next section spread and then spread some more. You will have a very short window of time here to spread before the bombs actually detonate. Classes like mages can for example double blink away and ice block to detonate theirs ahead of time to make a little bit more space. But again main focus here is clearing the bomb safely not nuke the boss. As soon as all the bombs have detonated, stack on boss, pop bloodlust and nuke. Again, tank furry near the infinite darkness for membrane and if you can't get him down before the next set of infinite darkness, break cysts a bit before, wind rush or roar and run over there. For us he died just as we got over after the previously mentioned darkness. And I think that's pretty much it. Long rant is very long, sorry about that. Anyways, the fight itself is very hectic but as I mentioned very scripted. That you just need to get a hang of it and get into the mindset that mechanics outweigh boss damage at almost every turn. But as soon as you get into the ebb and flow of this encounter, the pieces fall into place fairly quick. Now, if you have any questions or run into any issues during your progression, hit me up on Facebook or become a Patreon. As a Patreon, you will get access to my Discord where you can find things like weak auras, healing notes, and a ton of awesome people helping each other out during progression. And it's also the fastest way to get a hold of me. And as always, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like and ring that notification bell. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time on Nazoth the Corrupter. Ooh.